experience for me. I've never spoken to so many people. And this gives me an opportunity to nail my colours to the mast. I want to salute the bravery of Jared Batten, the bravery of Lord Pearson, and the bravery of Tommy Robinson. Many of my colleagues do not like me being here. And my response to them is that hell with you. We're now going to talk about farming. Many farmers are frightened of the no deal. They needn't be frightened of the no deal because farmers across the channel are even more frightened of a no deal. The Dutch vegetable producer wants our market. The French wine producer wants our market. The Spanish fruit producer wants our market. And they want their political masters to stop faffing about and organise a proper deal. Now, although we are supposed to be getting our farming policy back, we will not get it back whilst the EU has sovereignty over our environment policy, because the two go together. What do they do in the EU to make farming difficult? Regulation. And they are banning pesticides one by one. These are materials that have been approved by our own safety inspectors here. And every time this happens, it makes it more difficult to produce your food. And in the end, it gets so expensive, we give up. And you end up buying food from foreign farmers who use the methods that we are not allowed to use. Now, finally, there's another big scam. It's called man-made climate change. And farmers are supposed to be doing something about it. And they are told, you must reduce your CO2 output. Well, there's only one, well, there are two ways we can do that. We can either use glyphosate and grow GM crops, but the Green Lobby hate glyphosate and GM crops even more than they hate carbon dioxide. So, to reduce our CO2 emissions, we will have to reduce our tractor use, which means we will have to abandon some land. That means the food that that land did produce will be produced by foreign farmers who have no problems with CO2. There's another gas called methane. It's emitted by our ruminants, our cows and our sheep. Our farmers are going to be expected to measure the methane that the cows produce. If you've ever tried it, it's very smelly. The only way that we can actually reduce the methane that they produce is to stop feeding them grass and to bring them inside and feed them corn and soya beans instead. Now the Green Lobby love to see cows outside eating grass. They can't have it both ways. So what can we do? Reduce the numbers of sheep and cows and make up the difference from foreign produced food who couldn't give a fart about methane. There's another greenhouse gas called water vapour. That's the cloud cover. Fortunately, the green lobby aren't stupid enough to make sure it doesn't rain. So that leaves the last one called nitrous oxide. How do farmers produce that? They produce it by growing leguminous crops like peas, beans and clover. Now the green lobby love leguminous crops, but they hate nitrous oxide, mainly because they got it muddled up with nitrous dioxide. So they are in a real trump muddle. Now, finally to finish up, the farmer himself can produce or reduce some nitrous oxide. Because when he gets amorous around his wife, 
His lower body changes shape. You may have noticed. In order for that to happen, he first has to produce some nitrous oxide. So, chaps, if you really want to save this planet, it's not just a matter of not doing any sex. You mustn't even think about it. Thank you.